Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. In today's Equipment Autopsy, a personal vendetta. This is the Nest Smoke Detector. Now, the Nest Smoke Detector is really awesome. I like it because I don't like tradition. Tradition, more often than not, is an excuse for lazy thinking. And I think it's really awesome that somebody came along and said, let's take the smoke detector into the 21st century. Because smoke detectors have evolved very, very slowly and in very small ways over a very long period of time. This thing has Wi-Fi, it's got multicolored LEDs, it talks to you, it's, I mean, it's a smoke detector with an operating system. It's, it's cool. And I firmly agree that they are the absolute best that money can buy in the world of smoke detectors. Now this is just my opinion. But if you have a smoke detector, shut up, shut up, don't you, this is the smoke thing. Smoke is clearing in the living room. That's great. If you have a smoke detector that's smart enough to talk to you and flash different colored lights, and it knows where it is, and it knows your Wi-Fi password, you would think that the smoke detector would be smart enough to have a clock. And it would just know that if perhaps it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and its sensor is kerfluffled or not quite the way it should be. Not that there's a fire. There was no smoke. It didn't think there was smoke. It thought that the smoke sensor had gotten not functional. Okay. It would say, that's an important thing and you need to know about that. But that maybe you don't need to know about that at 3 o'clock in the morning. Instead, it chose to emit a beep. If it's three o'clock in the morning and you are sound asleep and you've been asleep since say midnight and you get awoken by the very characteristic beep of a smoke detector, two things happen. One, the massive surge of adrenaline. You are wide awake right now. Two, you're not going back to sleep anytime soon. This sucks. So, given that the smoke sensor is apparently faulty because it told me so by beeping and by sending me text messages to every electronic device that I own, I figured it might be a good autopsy today. Now, it told me at 3 o'clock in the morning that the smoke sensor was faulty. However, Heads up, there's smoke in the living room. Actually, there's vapor in the autopsy table. Emergency. Emergency! Danger! Danger! So. In the living room. Yes, in the living room. This is smoke alarm hush. Thank in you. In the living room. In the living room. We're in the living room. So apparently the smoke sensor works just fine. And my phone is going nuts over here. <laughs> because it texts you. It really is quite the awesome device. Shut up! This alarm can't be hushed. You want to bet? This alarm. There's... Yes! God, that's loud. It really sucks when it's like right the... here. Yeah, I know. Wave at me to hush. Smoke alarm hushed in the living room. Shut up. <laughs> it runs on six ultimate lithium batteries. You're hushed. I feel a little better now. All right, so on the outside, there is the grill. There is the button, the center part is, is a button, and then there's a light ring around it. 
let's take a look at what's inside because this thing is just, it's made of awesome and I think that they are eminently hackable, but I haven't seen anybody hack one yet. I'd really like to. On the back of it, there's a USB port and you can see it even when the back's on it. There's a, uh, it looks like this. And right here, that's a USB port. And I think somehow with a little bit of mojo, you could patch that in to a computer and maybe find some cool stuff in there. I think that it would be really cool if you could hack one of these and just explore the firmware, explore how it works and what it does and all that. I think it'd be cool if you could add more locations to it. There's only a few locations in the list like living room and kitchen and garage and basement and really, really arbitrary stuff. I think it'd be really cool to be able to say like, you know, this is the smoke detector in Mackie's Funhouse or whatever. Because it's got all this capability. Now, they come in two different versions. There's a battery powered one and a wired in one. This was a battery powered one. You can see because there's no port on the back for wiring it in. But inside, the chassis is the same because it's still got the ports for the, the hardwired one. Now, I got all the screws out. And I would imagine it just pops right out. But I want to be gentle. So we'll grab a little lever. Oh, that's just plastic. Okay, cool. Come on out. I want to try and remove it as, as intact and in a single piece as possible. Uh, I'm going to take the plastic cover off the back so that I can unplug the little cables. That should just let me take that right off. Yeah, I need a little pair of pliers. There's our board. By the way, I want to thank the person in viewer mail who sent in the, uh, the little magnetic bowls. They're very handy. the screaming speaker of doom. Oh, one more screw. Okay. Battery housing. And this should be the button and light ring. I'm just going to cut it, pop it right out. The button and light ring housing you can see right here is on a spring. Like there's some coiled plastic springy bits and it's like glued in there or something. So I'm just going to snap the springy bits, just cut them right off.
because that's easier than trying to fight the glue. So that's that's what's left inside the housing. It's pretty much empty. You can see the screen over it. That's just it. Okay, now this, I'm just gonna leave that together because I can plug it back in there. And we'll set this aside. This is just the battery tray. You can see there's just, it's holds six batteries and it does it in two different banks. There's actually a center tap connection. So there is a connection on each end, then a center tap. And then this is the screaming alarm of doom and pain. It is impressively loud. It's a little plastic speaker in a housing. Doesn't really appear to be any more to it. I don't think it has a built-in amp or anything like that. I think it's all done from the board. So this is the brains. And this is the part we really want to look at. Now this is a revision A 01-01-022-03. You can see it right here. And I'm going to zoom in really far on this for you guys so you can really see it. Okay, there's the circuit board. And you can see the revision number down in the corner. You can see the USB connection. This would be the wired in power connection. I think this is the actual smoke sensor because there's a bunch of little holes around the side. On this side, we've got three more devices. So let's dig into it and figure out what's what because I don't know and I want to find out. So we've got nothing's labeled. They're not giving away any secrets. There's a button here. This is an electrical contact. You can see the, the disc of the contact and this is a piece of spring metal. So that touching does something. I think this senses that it's in the housing. I take off as much as I can. I wonder if I can lift under that and get a look. Oh, hello. Well, it's soldered on and it's not giving anything away, but I'm pretty sure this is a battery or an impressively large capacitor for what it is. It says Figaro 130J02. It's got a code on it, 0978. And then on this side, it says TGS5342. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. It could be a battery or a capacitor, judging by the shape. And it's soldered on each end. For a capacitor of that size and shape, it'd usually be an electrolytic, so it'd be connected on one end um, with two connections. This is on both ends, and there's definitely a, a positive end and a negative end, because it's got a band and a button. And given that one side's buttoned and one side's flat, it's really leading me to think it's a battery, but it's not marked with any voltage ratings or anything like that. But it looks like a small lithium cell. Over here, now this I think is a, is a smoke sensor. I'm pretty sure because of the, uh, the little fins around the edge. This I don't know. This might be a smoke sensor. This might be a carbon monoxide sensor because I know it senses both. Um, so I think this senses smoke particulates through the two little, like there's two little LEDs or maybe a infrared LED detector type thing. I think this optically senses smoke particles and I think this senses carbon monoxide. I could be totally wrong on that. This is just educated guesses. Now I also see these two little things here and I think these are some manner of ultrasonic emitter and receiver and that these are what it uses to sense um, motion when you wave at it because it knows. It knows it knows a lot. It knows if the lights turn out, so it's got to have a, a light sensor in it, which I don't see anywhere, but we should look around for that. Um, I, but I know it can sense light. I know it can sense movement, smoke, and carbon monoxide. So just going with my gut, I'm going to say this is the smoke sensor. This is the carbon monoxide sensor, and the carbon monoxide sensor is labeled EAST, patent number ZL2007201083355.
4. This just says nest on it. There's no numbers or anything. Hmm. I don't know how it senses light. But... All right, well, let's fire it up and see what we can make it do. I have to put some cables back in. That goes in that way, which means it goes in this way. Which may be rather tricky to do, but I'll try. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What are you? There's a toy surprise inside. We pop off the cap. Hello, look at you. Okay, now buried under the cap, I see this. Now that little thing there looks like a glass window on some type of electronic component. It may very well, it, it looks like, and I could be wrong, but it looks like a passive infrared sensor. That may be movement or light sensing. And if it's passive infrared, it would be totally fine being hidden behind this because, hey, look on the back. Look really close. You see those? Those are little Fresnel lenses. So this, to look at it from this side, just looks like a, a cover plate. But looking at it from the back, it's a totally different story. That is a passive infrared sensor. I'm almost certain of it. And these Fresnel lenses... While at optic frequencies, this is just, you know, translucent. It's almost opaque. But at infrared frequencies, it goes right through it. So that's, it's watching you. Your Nest thermostat is watching you with infrared, which is kind of cool. Now, it doesn't work like a camera like you're used to. It only works at infrared frequencies. And that might actually be able to be used to sense fire as well, because that would certainly show up infrared. But I think that's... That's its infrared sensor for waving. I think it also has an ultrasonic sensor as well. Um, so let's plug this in and see what we can do. So I gotta get that up and around. Okay, I got that plugged in-ish. Not 100% sure I'm plugging it in the right way. If it doesn't work, I'll flip it over. Okay, I've got that in there. And where do you go? You were plugged in over here, okay. Somebody with very tiny hands assembles these. Goes down like that. Okay, that's snapped in. And now I'm gonna put batteries in it. I'm gonna do that before I plug it in because it'll just be easier. The batteries are also numbered, so apparently you're supposed to put them in an order, and I am, though it doesn't really matter because it isn't plugged in right now. All right, now magic is about to happen, provided I plug it in the right way. Hi, from Nest. Hi, Nest. I'm expecting some LED mojo happening up here. Hi. You gonna wake up? Can you give me some lights? You could boot. The button, there's a switch on the back here that responds to like when you push the button. I'd like to make it do something. Ah, I'm not seeing any lights. 
and I'm not getting any action out of it. So that tells me I probably plugged it in upside down. So I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to unplug that. All right, so I had that like that. I'm going to flip it over like this and put the metal contacts down. There, that feels better, it looks better. I think that's the way it wants to go. Hi, from Beth. Hi, you wanna light up and do something? You could light up, that'd be fun. I can't get anything to light up, and I don't know why. I've got it plugged in. I'm even pretty sure I got it plugged in the right way. Maybe I can ram that in there further. Ready in the living room. Oh, now we're gonna test do something. To test. All right, let's run it through a test cycle and see if we can get. I don't see any. Oh no, you can see a little bit of lights in the edge. It's just hard with all the, the this stuff is going on. only a in. test. The alarm will sound. The alarm is loud. The test starts in 10 seconds. Press to cancel. 10. I'm, nine, not, I'm not doing that. 8. Cancel. Ready. In the living room. Thank you. Press to test. No. Because it freaks everybody out when they start hearing smoke, smoke alarms for some reason in this building. But you can see the lights working in there. And there's a lot of stuff on here that we can't really dig into. I would love dearly to be able to plug into this and explore the firmware on the, uh, as part of the show. I think that'd be really cool. But I'm going to need some serious computer mojo to do that. And I think given that it's very low level software and all that jazz, this is totally a Kidwell project. So I'm going to set this one aside. And when Paul's in town next, We'll do some digging with this. So keep an eye on the blogs, and when Kidwell's in town next, we'll check this out and see what we can get out of it. Because there's a lot to this, there's a lot more, and I think it's a fascinating bit of technology. I think it's really amazingly well built, and I like that this exists. I think that there's a really big opportunity for you to be designing and building products like this, to take something that hasn't evolved in decades and really bring it into the 21st century. Because this is a smoke detector. That's all it is. A smoke detector, carbon dioxide detector. I mean, it's really simple. But there's so much more to it than what everybody's used to. They're expensive. Absolutely. Worth every penny. They're, it's an amazing device. They've done the same thing for thermostats. And this could be done in a million other areas. You don't have to invent the next big thing. If you look at the history of science and technology and you look at how things are invented, James Watt didn't invent the steam engine from scratch. He stood on the shoulders of Newcomen and took it to the next step. I want you to think about where you could do this. It might be something amazingly simple. It could be shoelaces. But look at the world around you. Look at the existing state of all the technologies you see and say, what would happen if I made a version of this where money is no object, it doesn't matter what it costs, but it's the absolute best that technology can, can create in this day and age. I want to see that. I want to see more of things like this. The guy who invented the nest is a millionaire now. And he didn't invent anything new. He took something that already existed and has been around for decades and just made it amazingly better. Sometimes the best inventions start with an already pre-existing idea. That's how technology works. We don't make instant giant leaps. We take one more step. And you, being young, and intelligent and creative have the abilities to take that next step. And I would be sincerely honored if the Geek Group could in any way help you do that. So come here, use all of our tools, use all the materials, 
and take something to the next leap forward. I want to see you create something. And until next time, we're going to keep taking stuff apart and exploring. I'm Chris Bowden. You guys have fun. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.